International Student Campus Event Coordinator, Dustin Harris. You are joining us in the Brown Room of the Sue Craven Stivers Alumni House for the first episode of Lindsey Wilson Conversations of the 2009-2010 school year. Thanks for having me. The way this works is you get to enjoy a beverage of your choice while discussing a topic of your choice. The beverage you have chosen is tea Kuan Yin tea, and you are going to also talk to us about tea and later on show us a gong fu brewing technique. That's right. How long have humans been drinking tea? As far as we know, we've been drink humans have been drinking tea for thousands of years. Uh, I believe they say it originated in China. The scientific name for tea is Camellia sinensis. There's also other varietals of it. Um, it was originally consumed as a medicine. Um, it wasn't until about the Tang Dynasty when Liu Yu wrote his treatise on tea called uh, Cha Jing, or the classic of tea. You'll have to forgive me, my Chinese is terrible. Um, and that's still a definitive work for a lot of tea heads like me. In the West, tea is synonymous with Victoria, England. Yeah, usually when you talk about having tea with someone, you think of bone china cups, very ornate, uh, silver tea services, a lot of milk or cream, I guess, sugar, lemon, and orange. Uh, interestingly enough, tea in Victorian was very expensive, and lower classes had to do what they could to make that tea last longer and they would put milk in it. So the clarity of your tea was a direct symbol of your social affluence. How did you fall into tea? My journey into tea started as a complete accident. When I was a senior here at Lindsay Wilson College in 2006, I was privileged to be a part of the Lindsay in London program and I spent three months in London, England. And I went to the grocery store to buy some tea because Coke's very expensive over there. And I bought a box of Twining's Earl Grey. When I got it home, I found that I had bought a box of loose leaf tea instead of bags. And I bought, had to buy an infuser. And from then on, once I returned home, I started uh, intense tea drinking, I guess you could say. <laughs> what do you particularly like about tea? I think tea has a very casual yet romantic quality to it. And romantic, I mean, there's just so much to it. Like when you make a cup of tea for someone, whether you're doing gong fu brewing like I'm about to show you, using a big teapot or filling it, you're just throwing a bag in a cup, tea takes time. And in that time, there's usually conversation. And even when I make tea for my students in my office, it's a perfect time while it's brewing to get to know them a little better. and there's just a quality to tea that I just don't get when I have a, share other beverages with friends. Now let's do some gong fu brewing. Absolutely. The tea I'm going to be brewing for you today is called Tea Kuan Yin, or there's also an alternative pronunciation, Tea Guan Yin, but it translates as Tea of the Iron Goddess of Mercy. It's noted mostly for its kind of floral taste. I think it's reminiscent of honeysuckles, but it's my personal favorite tea to drink. I'm going to be preparing the tea today in the Chinese gong fu style, uh, gong fu meaning skill. Instead of using a large teapot, a lot of leaf, a lot of water, like a lot of you normally brew which, brew, which I call English style, this is a very typical setup. I brought a couple of examples for it. This is a called uh, a gaiwan, which means lidded bowl, which that's all it is. There's no, there's no filter in there. It's all done by your hand. All right, first step is you're gonna add your leaf. I have some dry leaf here, and you just add that to the gaiwan. And my water's hot enough, so then you'll just pour directly into the gaiwan. Like I said, there's no filter, and there's no, the way you do this is with just by using your hand and controlling the amount of space in the lid. The first time, you generally just pour it straight out. This is called a tea table, and it's actually got a little tray there that catches water, and there's a tube running out. 
So this, you add the tea for just a second, we call that a flash rinse. So that way it wakes the tea up a little bit, gets it to open up a little bit. Because if you overbrew tea, like if you've ever had tea that's kind of bitter, no matter what you do to it, it's been overbrewed. Because in all of the tea leaves, there's tannins, and overbrewing causes those tannins to be released. So my tea leaves are kind of woken up a little bit. So we'll add some more water. And then the general idea with gong fu brewing is you want to use a lot of leaf, not as much water as you typically would, and shorter steep times. That way it helps to completely release the aromas and the flavors. And I'm going to pull this up. This is called a fair cup. And this is just a strainer. When you generally drink tea in gong fu style, you use these small cups. This is called a sniffing cup or an aroma cup. This is called a sniffing cup. So, the first round's ready. Some people pick it up without using the dish and just do it by the rim, but I cheat. So you will take it for your fair cup and you'll pour it into the aroma cup. And you'll take the tasting cup and put it on top. And you'll pick it up. Hopefully it won't burn myself. Whoop. And then you set the cup down. You lift the aroma cup and you'll roll it between your fingers because it is hot, it's very thin porcelain, and you smelling that way you can pick up the aromas and then you just have a sip if you look to you. see how it turned out it's quite nice international student campus event coordinator Dustin Harris thank you for joining us for Lindsay Wilson conversations well, thanks for having me and enjoy